Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So as has become a bit of a tradition, <laughs> I am going to go over the full self-driving beta 10.9 release notes, Tesla's full self-driving beta 10.9. I have to admit that there was so much engineering speak in this one that I actually went and had to Google some stuff and I had to ask my friends on Discord for a little bit of help with all of this. So anyway, I tried to put it together the best I could. Uh, and, and again, some of this is just literally not clear. So, you know, there's places where I just have to take a guess because the language is not quite clear enough. But anyway, we're going to start right into it with the first one. It is pretty nuts. Okay, here we go. Improved intersection extents and right-of-way assignment by updating modeling of intersection areas from dense rasters, in other words, bag of points, to sparse instances. Increased intersection region IOU by 4.2%. The sparse intersection network is the first model deployed with an auto-regressive architecture that runs natively with low latency on the TRIP AI accelerator chip through innovations in the AI compiler stack. Whew. <laughs> And if you're not confused by that one, I don't know what to tell you about that. Okay, so let's try to break this thing down a little bit. The first thing I would suggest is you should watch the two videos linked in the card, and I'll put them, I guess, at the end as well because they're really important to this. But both of them talk about how you go from a bag of points, which is basically in a video saying like person, 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 for every single point that's there, to creating more conceptual shapes, in other words, segmenting out objects into the scene. So it's very important that they're able to go from one of these to another. So what they're doing is they're going from a huge, dense bag of points, which is every single pixel in this video sequence that they have that has eight cameras all around them, etc., to reducing this down to a sparse number of instances. For example, things like lane marking lines, edges of the road, lights, median areas in an intersection, just all the kinds of things that are in an intersection. And probably also including the open space, the big open space in the middle that has no lane markings that you just kind of have to guess at for a lot of these. So all of that stuff is super, super important to how all of this works. And then of course, I've got to give kudos to Tesla for not even telling people what IOU is. IOU means intersection over union, and it's a methodology. And let me bring up this picture because it helps explain it. So basically, you have a ground truth which is cat and you've got a box around the cat which a human being labeled with a, with a green box and then you've got a computer that is labeling it it's at, it's trying to figure out where the cat is in the scene and what it's done so far is it's created a blue box which is you know mostly the left of the cat has it's, it's figured that part out it's a little bit shy on the ear but it's really really missing the right side so the intersection over union technique gives us a number between zero and one that says how much overlap there is between the human labeled green box and the blue labeled computer box and honestly i believe that what tesla is doing is they're not using boxes anymore they're actually using panoptic segmentation which actually goes in and outlines the cat so what you would see is an actual cat shaped outline and it's trying to figure that out so it's an even more you know precise method of determining where things are in a scene if a quote helps i'll give you a quote about this quote intersection over union or iou is used when calculating map mean average precision it is a number from zero to one that specifies the amount of overlap between the predicted and ground truth bounding box so again, what that does is the closer the number gets to one, the more they overlap with each other. And again, bounding boxes, I believe that Tesla's not using bounding boxes anymore. I think they're actually breaking the whole scene down into, you know, pixels. And so they're getting a pixel level overlap. But basically, if the computer labeled cat shape and the human labeled cat shape overlap with each other, 100%, you get 100% or one. So anyway, the 4.2% intersection increase means that they've got more overlap between the, you know, dogs or cats or people or cars or lights or pieces of the road or curbs or whatever. They've got more overlap between those things. So it's an improvement, right? So I don't know what the number was before, but if it was like 85% before, they now have like, you know, 89% or something like that. So they're improving that number. And then the other half of what they're talking about here is also really, really interesting. So let's start with the Trip AI accelerator chip. I actually had to look back about three years. I had to look back to January of 2019 when they were introducing the Hardware 3 chipset, and they said that they have this Trip AI accelerator chip, which is a neural network accelerator. And so that's really cool. That allows it to do basically dot products really, really fast. As Elon says, 99% of the calculations of neural networks are dot products. And so basically it can do that super, super fast, but it sounds like in general, in the past, what it would have to do is do a bunch of that, and then it would have to send it back to the main GPU, get more information, send it back. But it sounds like what's happening here 
is it's actually running natively on this chip without having to pass information back and forth from the chip to the main CPU and back again, which will make it go a lot faster, which means that we're getting low latency. And then the auto regressive architecture, I believe means that the neural network is actually actively, so as it sits there at an intersection, right, you pull up to the red light and it actually will start to, you know, refine that uh, so instead of making a guess and just sticking with that guess, it's actually regressing that. In other words, it's trying to get the overlap of all the objects to 1.0 as much as possible. And it's doing it actively rather than a one-shot deal. So that's all just incredible stuff. And obviously they've had to innovate the AI compiler stack in order to make this all work. And hey, guess what? In his talk with Lex Friedman, Elon Musk talks about how they actually are building a C compiler that's natively compiling to hardware three, and this looks like a direct result of that. In other words, what they're able to do is compile their C code and you know, therefore their neural nets, which ultimately run back down to C code, they're able to compile that directly to hardware three and make better use out of the chips and reduce latency and improve performance. So anyway, that's a ton of stuff in one little paragraph, but wow, it is a huge amount of information information, and I think it shows an impressive improvement on Tesla's part. Now, if you're a driver of full self-driving beta, I have not gotten 10.9 yet. You know, it's Sunday. I expect I'll probably get it late Monday or early Tuesday or something like that. But when I drive it, what I expect to see is often the intersections are kind of flickery. You'll see the edges flickering and you'll see cars flickering in and out and so forth and so on. What I expect to see is those things should be much more rock solid. The visualization should indicate that the, you know, the car understands what's going on much better and it's able to make a consistent guess at what are curbs and what's open space and what are lane lines and where are the lights and so forth. All right, so finally, on to the second point. Upgraded generalized static object network to use 10-bit photon count streams rather than 8-bit ISP tone mapped images by adding 10-bit inference support in the AI compiler stack. Improved overall recall by 3.9% and precision by 1.7%. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the easy things. Static <laughs> means things that are not moving around. So that would be like parked cars or people standing still in the dark or something along those lines. So in other words, things that aren't moving around, that they're just kind of still in the scene. And now we get to the interesting stuff. So they start talking about 10-bit photon counts rather than tone mapped, or in other words, pre-processed images. And this is interesting because again, Elon Musk and Andre Karpathy have talked about how they're moving from uh, from processed images to raw photon counts to improve the performance of their Tesla full self-driving stack. And I thought that was coming with version 11, but it looks like they've already got a piece of that working in version 10.9. So that is super cool. So they're moving away from things that are pre-processed, which reduces latency, but also really improves the ability of the network to train on as much data as possible because the cameras pick up a lot more stuff than you actually see once you kind of tone map the images to make it more pleasant for human beings. And again, I've done videos on that, so definitely check those things out. The other piece of the puzzle is that they're moving from 8-bit depth to 10-bit depth. So 8-bit depth gives you like 64 values, so you could have like 64 grayscale values, which is not that much, whereas 10 gives you 1,024, 1024. So that's a huge difference in this stuff. It may seem like, oh, it's just you know, two bits, but it's actually a huge difference. And so that means that they're able to see things like really, really dark scenes. They can see better because you've got more bit depth and more resolution. And also at the exact same time, you should be able to see things that are super saturated. Things like if the camera's looking almost directly into the sun and it's very, very bright and you still wanna pull out some details of like a person or a car that's kind of in between you and the sun and it may be sort of blinded, all of that extra pixel depth is going to give you that extra information and then not tone mapping it, in other words, not processing the image, is going to also provide you with more information. So at the extremes, really dark and really light, this should help a ton with these cameras. And of course, as you can see, they've improved recall by 3.9% and precision by 1.7%. And again, I've done videos on this before, but just to bring this up again real quick, that's precision and recall. Basically, precision tells you you get less false positives and recall tells you you get less false negatives. False negatives in this situation are more important. You don't want to have a person standing there in the dark and have the car not see them. So the fact that the recalls improved by 3.9% is an even better sign, right? It's great that the precision, you don't want false negatives as well because you don't want the car breaking and imagining there are things there, but it's more important that it doesn't miss stuff that actually is there. 
All right, the next one is made unprotected left turns across oncoming lanes more natural by proceeding straight into intersection while yielding before initiating the turn. So if you've driven the full self-driving beta before, a lot of times on big roads, like multi-lane roads, what it'll do is start to make a left turn and then have to wait for traffic and be kind of caught in an awkward position where it's, you know, waiting for traffic, but it's not pointing straight. And, you know, that's kind of weird. So basically what they've done here is they've made the car go straight in the intersection, wait for the other cars to go by. And as soon as there's a gap, then it turns left and it goes across. So that's going to be much more comfortable for us human drivers. That's much more the way that we human beings drive. We don't, you know, just like turn into the lane and then wait for these cars to go by at an uncomfortably close distance. We pull straight forward into the intersection wait for cars to go by and then make the turn. All right, the next one is improved lane preference and topology estimation by 1.2% with a network update and a new format for navigation clues. So the topology I understand better than the lane preference thing, but anyway, topology of course is just the way land is. And essentially they've improved it by 1.2%, which may not seem like a ton, but they're, you know, but anything you can do if you if you see that there's a bump or a speed bump or anything like that, that helps. And navigation clues is interesting. They don't say exactly what that is, but it could be things like maybe the little arrows that point towards speed bumps that tell you that they're coming up or things on the side of the road, who knows, but whatever, they're using more clues to help them map out the topology better. As for improved lane preference, I guess what that might mean is if you've got, I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know if you'd have a speed bump across one lane, but, but something along the lines, if you, if you have a pothole or something maybe, and maybe that's what this is too, right? So if you're driving along and there's two lanes you can choose from and it sees a, a big divot in the road, like a pothole or something, it will move over to a better lane. Now it's only a 1.2% improvement, but still, you know, that might be great because all you need is to drive over something like that one time at high speed and you mess up your tire or something. So anyway, uh, even a small improvement in that situation could be really, really wonderful. Next up is improved short deadline lane changes with better modeling of necessary deceleration for maneuvers beyond the lane change. So this is actually an area that's been problematic for Tesla. And what you'll see is that the car will, you know, it'll try to make a lane change into another lane, either because it needs to get over someplace because it needs to make a turn or something, or because the traffic in one lane is going significantly slower than another, but it doesn't really understand what's gonna happen immediately after the lane change. So sometimes you'll pop out and make the person behind you have to like slow down really quickly. More frequently, it will actually bail out on the thing or it will pull into the other lane and then immediately have to brake really, really hard. So all of that stuff is very uncomfortable and jerky and makes people you know, not happy to be driving in the car. I don't know that it's particularly unsafe, but it's really uncomfortable. But basically modeling all of this stuff means that as the car pulls out, it will already be slowing down if it knows that there's cars in the other lane that you know it needs to adjust for. So the really cool part of this is that means that the car is thinking longer term and the more long term the car thinks, you know, the next several seconds instead of the next one second, the more comfortable and human it's going to drive like and that's really, really cool. Next up, improved future paths for objects not confined to lane geometry by better modeling of their kinematics. So one thing that's really interesting here is that, you know, things like cars and bicycles and such being in lanes helps Tesla out, the full self-driving package out. So that's just an interesting point I did not know about, but that's very cool. So what they're talking about here is things that are not in lanes. So it could be a car that's changing lanes. It could be a cyclist who is over by the side of the road and not really in a lane. It could be in your neighborhood with like somebody running and your, you know, your neighborhood doesn't have lane markings. So any of those situations seem like they could be improved by what they're talking about here. So of course, better kinematics means that it's a better physics modeling. It's better understanding of like if a car is going, you know, 35 miles an hour or something like that, how much time is it going to take to finish changing a lane if it's making the lane change at one mile an hour or two miles an hour, what, you know, laterally or something. So it's able to estimate all of this stuff better by basically having a better physics model. So all of that is very cool. It's gonna again, help the car to drive in a more comfortable manner because the car won't be having to adjust as much. It's it's going to make better predictions about what other cars are doing. Next up is made launches from stop more calm when there is an imminent slowdown nearby. Yes. <laughs> this one's been a long time coming. So here's the situation. You're at a red light. 
there's another red light ahead of you, you know, just a few hundred meters or something like that. And the light turns green where you are and the car takes off like a bat out of hell towards the next intersection and then immediately has to slam the brakes on. That's, that's a really unnatural kind of drive. It feels super uncomfortable. You know, and you're like, oh gosh, is the car gonna stop because it's accelerating towards the people in front? So this should be a much, much needed improvement. So essentially what should happen is if it knows it's gonna have to slow down very shortly after it starts, it should just start at a more easy pace so that it doesn't have to do this like super fast acceleration, super fast deceleration kind of thing. So <laughs> kudos to Tesla if that works the way that they're saying that's going to help a lot. And finally, we have improved gap selection when yielding to a stream of oncoming cars on narrow roads. So it's a little bit unclear here. There's two possibilities of what they're talking about. One could be that, and this is a situation, right? You've got cars parked on both sides of the road or something, and you've got a person coming towards you and you going forward, and you have to do that human negotiation of who's gonna go first and who's going to wait. And so the one possibility is that they could be talking about gap selection in terms of physical distances. Like if your car knows that it can pull into like a little space over on the side between cars and let the other cars through, that could be very beneficial and a better selection of that gap. What I think they're actually talking about is more of a temporal gap, which is like you pull forward and you're waiting and some cars are going by and it's like, how long of a gap do I have, right? Between the car, the last car that just went through and the next one that's coming through, do I have enough time to pull out and make the maneuver I need to and then get back over to the other side of the road before that other car is going to be inconvenienced by me? So in any case, what this should prevent is the car just kind of stalling out in the middle of the road and people, you know, being frustrated the other person going like, what are they doing there? They're not driving, they're not moving over, they're just kind of sitting there. So it should help to resolve that situation. And you know, it's an improvement, so I'm not expecting it to be like 100% accurate, but the hope is that what we would see is a nice little improvement in that, and the car is going to do a better job of guesstimating when it can go and when it needs to stay. And that should be a really major improvement. All right, so none of that was a big deal, right? And it was super easy to understand. <laughs> I tell you, man. <laughs> it's like every version of this thing, it seems like the engineering speak gets thicker and thicker with all of this. So it's really fun to dig into this. I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got something out of it and you understand this a little bit better. If you did, definitely like the video so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. And here again, I had to ask my patrons on Patreon a little bit for a little bit of help with this because I was like, I don't even understand exactly what's going on here. So anyway, thank you all so much for helping out with this video. You made it even better. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the Tesla Bot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping on Amazon or looking for a solar roof or a power wall helps out the channel. And until next time, bye-bye.